Stuka Joe here. Last January, I visited Spain, more specifically Badajoz, for the third Bellota Con. And among the games I played there was this one, Richard III, published by Columbia Games, a strategic game about the War of the Roses. And I took with me this uh, huge neoprene map. My opponent was Asier Rojo, and I had a great time playing this game. It had been a while since I had played a block game, and I was pleasantly surprised with this one. It has a fair amount of chrome and differentiation between various units and map areas, and it allows for offensive and defensive strategies for both sides during the entire game. So what I will be doing in this video, I will be showing you some photographs and video clips of Richard III at the Third Biotacon, and then I will show you the game's components and an example of play. And I hope you enjoy the video. Richard III, second campaign, with Asier. Dale, Asier, give us an explanation of why we're filming this thing. Let's see. Jose Stuka ha lanzado un ataque de Sussex a Kent, donde yo tenía este ejército, con una carta especial de traición. Entonces, lo que está intentando es que mi noble, que encima es el noble del lugar, se pase a su bando. Si esto es así, cambiaríamos este bloque por el suyo y la batalla podrían cambiar las tornas. Para ello, lo que necesita es que en una tirada de un dado de 6 salga un número par. Si es así, Buckingham cambiará de bando. Si no, luchará conmigo. Así que adelante. ¡Oh! ¡Par! ¡Dos! ¡Yes! ¡Traidor! ¡Traidor! ¡Viva, viva la traición! <risa> Entonces Buckingham cambia antes de la batalla de bando y ahora me deja en una muy mala situación. ¡Bienvenidos, muchachos! <risa> Cerveza gratis después de la masacre. Buena carta la de traición, sí okay. señor. Vamos a resolver la batalla. Bueno, pues aquí tenemos el resultado final de la batalla. La ficha traidora al final ha sido decisiva. Nos han sacado de Kent. Buckingham. Buckingham. Los héroes de Buckingham. Le, héroes les Kent. haces duque, de hecho. Duque de Buckingham, ¿no? Ninguno de sus bloques ha muerto y los míos, como podéis ver, han quedado muy reducidos y encima con muchas bajas. Así que la partida ha vuelto a cambiar de las tornas y ahora pasaría a la defensiva. Y esta carta es muy buena carta. Este es Glyph. Very nice card. Déjame ver, déjame ver la carta. Treason card. And he's the traitor. The hero, the hero. More than... Hammer of the Scots? Or no. Similar? No. Uh, Crusader Rex is yes, number one for me. Okay. And Hammer of the Scots I like very much. And this one I think I still haven't uh, sort of exhausted. I feel with Hammer of the Scots I kind of have gotten it, you know? And this one I feel like I could still learn from it, from it and to do better. So there's this I think offers more than Hammer of the Scots. Probably if I kept playing, if I keep playing this, I bet I like this better in the end. But it's still Crusader Rex. Richard III is a two-player strategic block game that recreates the War of the Roses, where one player commands the forces of the House of York and his opponents the blocks representing the forces of the House of Lancaster. The game includes the following components. One cardstock game map, 63 blocks, one label sheet, with labels to be pasted on each of the blocks, 25 cards, four six-sided dice, and one eight-page rulebook. The game consists of three campaigns, each of seven game turns for a total of 21 turns. A political turn links the campaigns. Many things happen during each political turn. First, all levies and bombards and the Welsh unit return to their owner's pool, and all mercenaries return to their home areas. The rebel unit also disbands and goes to the pool. Next, 
players check to see if usurpation occurs. And this happens when the pretender's side controls a majority of the nobles and heirs on the map. And for this purpose, each church block counts as one noble as well as the occupation of London. If usurpation does occur, the pretender's senior heir becomes the king, and the former king is deposed. The next step is for the pretender and his heirs on the map to go to exile. Calais and France can each supply up to four blocks plus local mercenaries, while Ireland and Scotland can supply two plus local mercenaries. Nobles go to spaces showing their shields, and if these are occupied by enemy units, they go to the pool off the map. Next, the king goes home. The king and his heirs are now placed in areas that are marked with a crown, and nobles of the king's side are placed in areas showing their shield. Finally, blocks that are in the pool face down are now reset, placed face up, and available to enter play during the next campaign. If at any time all of a side's five heirs have been eliminated, the opposing side wins an instant victory. Otherwise, after the third campaign, whoever is king after any usurpation occurs wins the game. To give you an idea of the flow of the game and the mechanics and the different capabilities of certain units in the game, we'll play one turn, starting with each player selecting one card, moving their forces, and then we will resolve battles. In this example, the red forces, the Lancastrians, have the king, and the Yorkist, the white forces, are the pretender. First, each player secretly selects one card and places it face down on the table. Both cards are revealed and the Yorkist played a three action point card while the Lancastrians played a two action point card. So the side with the most action points goes first in case of ties, the side that is the pretender goes first and whenever a player plays an event, an event always goes first before any action point card. But in this example, the Yorkists go first and have three action points to spend. We see in this example that the Lancastrian forces have their units deployed in four groups. One group is in Wales, another group in Warwick, in the center of the map, another group to the east in Lincoln, and the fourth group is in North Yorks. When we look at the other hand at the Yorkist forces, their forces are more dispersed. However, they have five units in Middle Essex, and that's the space that contains London, which is important for victory point purposes. And notice that the black block represents rebels under the control of the red Lancastrian forces. So that means that Middle Essex cannot be left empty because the rebels can just simply move in and capture London. So the Yorkists have three action points and they are bent on trying to destroy the Lancastrian forces at Warwick before the other forces can consolidate and become more powerful. So the first action point will be used to activate the Yorkist forces in Middlesex. It has five units. One will be left there, so four blocks move into Leicester, and they can still move one more space, and they can split also. One thing that the Yorkists want to achieve is to prevent the forces in Lincoln from reinforcing the Lancastrian forces at Warwick. So they will move one of the four blocks into Derby, and the remaining three blocks will move into Warwick by crossing into Warwick through this yellow border here, which uh, you can move four units across in one turn. The Yorkists still have two action points, and they are concerned now with the 
Lancastrian forces here in Wales, which are also one move away from reinforcing Warwick by way of Chester. So the Yorkists will use another action point to activate their sole unit in Ireland, which is the Irish mercenary unit. And as you can see, Ireland has a ship symbol. That means that that is a port, so it can move to another port in the same sea. And that other port is in Chester. So the Irish mercenaries arrive there and complete their sea movement. And by moving into Chester, they have effectively blocked the Lancastrian forces in Wales from reaching Warwick in their next turn. And the Yorkist player still has one more action point, and it will be used to activate the Yorkist units in Oxford. And both units will move into Warwick by crossing the blue border, and up to three units can cross a particular blue border during any turn. And that completes the three action points for the Yorkist player. Now it's the Lancastrians turn and they have two action points. The Lancastrians will not be able to move any of their units to reinforce the situation in Warwick, but the first action point will be used to activate the units in Northern Yorks. Three of those units will move to South Yorks and from there into Derby, where they will later fight it out with the lone Yorkist unit there. And the last Lancastrian unit in North Yorks moves into Lancaster. Now the Lancastrians have still one action point left. They will try to create a threat towards London. They will activate their units in Lincoln and will move three of them into Rutland and there will be another battle there. And that ends the Lancastrian turn. So now we go to the battles phase and there's three battles, one in Warwick, another one in Derby and one in Rutland and player one in this case, the Yorkist player decides the order in which battles will be resolved. And the Yorkist player decides to resolve the battle in Warwick first. The Yorkist player has to declare which of their two forces will be the main attack, which will participate in round one, and then the other force can join the battle in round two. And the Yorkist player decides that this force here, that entered through Leicester, will be the main force. So for round one, three Yorkist units will be attacking four Lancastrian units. Let's take a closer look. Battles last four rounds, and the first round consists of the defender firing first, followed by the attacker, and so forth in each subsequent round. By special rule, the bombard is treated as an A unit during the first round. But after the first round, it goes back to becoming a D unit. First, the defenders fire, and they fire first their A units. But note that in this particular battle, there's going to be some adjustments made to the strengths of some defending units. For example, we have here Prince Edward, which is a royal heir, and in this particular space, there is a crown, meaning that any royal heir which is defending receives a plus one to its strength. So Edward, instead of uh, defending with a strength of three, will be defending with a strength of four. In addition, we see Buckingham's shield there, and we see Buckingham's shield also printed on the map in this area. So Buckingham will have a strength of five. But we start first with the defenders firing their A units. And there's only one A unit on the defending side, and that is the Welsh mercenaries. And they roll three dice because they have a strength of three, they have a rating of two, so that means one and two's hit. So we roll three dice, and all are misses. 
There's no more A units on the defending side, so now the A units on the attacking side fire, and the Bombard fires first. It has an A rating during the first round, so it will roll three dice, and it needs one through three to hit. And it scores one hit, and that has to be taken into account by the strongest defending unit, and that is Buckingham, which has a strength of four, four pips, so it is rotated. The Burgundian mercenaries, they have a strength of three, so they roll three dice, and they score hits on one, twos, or threes. And they score two hits, and now the strongest units are the Welsh mercenaries, Prince Edward, and Buckingham again, so the Lancastrian player can choose. And it will choose again Buckingham to take the loss, so Buckingham takes two more losses and is now at the minimum strength of one. So now we go to the B units to fire first, the ones on the defending side, and there are three B units. We start with Rivers, strength of two, one and two's hit. The roll is a three and a three, both miss. Now Prince Edward, which is a royal heir, and as we stated before, this space shows a crown, meaning that any royal heir, a highest ranking royal heir on any defending side, gets an increase of one to its strength. So Edward fires with four dice and needs ones to hit. And Edward rolls one, one, and that is a hit. And the loss has to be absorbed by any of the defending units which have equal strength. So it is absorbed by the Bombard, which has now a strength of two. And now, finally, Buckingham fires, rolls one die, and needs a one or a two to score a hit. And the roll is a one. So one hit has to be absorbed either by the Burgundian mercenaries or Gloucester, who is a royal heir. And in this particular case, it will be Gloucester. And his block is rotated 90 degrees, and there are no C or D units, so that's the end of round one. Now we go to round two, and we add the two Yorkist units that entered the space through the blue border. And these new units are Warwick and Hastings, and notice now that the Bombard will become a D unit. So first we fire with the defending A units. There's only one, the Welsh mercenaries, and they roll three dice, one and twos are hits, but they miss. Now to the attacking A units, the Burgundian mercenaries, they roll three dice, one, twos, and threes are hits, and they score one hit, which has to be absorbed by the strongest unit, that is either the Welsh mercenaries or Prince Edward. The Lancastrian player chooses and the Welsh mercenaries take the hit. And now we go to the defending B units. Rivers rolls two dice and needs one and twos. But he also misses. Now Prince Edward rolls four dice because he has that bonus because of the printed crown in the space. Four dice and only hits on ones. And he scores two hits. And Warwick is the strongest Yorkist unit, so he has to absorb both. Finally, Buckingham, which has a strength of one, but has also a bonus because his shield is printed on the space. So Buckingham rolls two dice and needs a one or a two to hit. The roll is a three and a four, both miss. Now the Yorkist B units fire. We start with Warwick. And note that the, the space uh, where the battle is taking place has Warwick's shield, but this bonus only applies when defending. So Warwick fires with two dice and needs one, twos, or threes for hits. A five and a four, so Warwick misses. Next, Hastings needs ones and twos to hit and rolls three dice. And he scores two hits. The strongest unit is Prince Edward, so he has to take both hits. And now Gloucester fires. He has a strength of two. 
Hero, so he rolls two dice and needs one, twos, or threes to hit. He scores one hit, and it has to be taken either by the Welsh mercenaries or by Rivers. So Rivers takes the hit. All B units on the attacking side fired. Now the C units on the defending side fire. There's no C units. There's no C units on the attacking side. So the D units on the defending side fire. There's no D units there either. And finally, the D units on the attacking side fire, the Bombard. We'll roll two dice and score hits on one, twos, and threes. And the roll is a one and a three. Two hits. And it has to be absorbed by the strongest unit, which is the Welsh mercenary unit, which has a strength of two, so it is eliminated. So now we move on to the third round. And notice that uh, the red blocks could choose to retreat. However, they cannot retreat into spaces occupied or controlled by enemy forces, so they could not retreat into Chester or here into Hereford. They could not retreat into a space from which the uh, enemy uh, crossed the border into the battle space, so they could not retreat into Oxford. They could not retreat here either into Gloucester. They could not retreat into Leicester because enemy forces moved from there. And they cannot retreat into Derby because that is enemy occupied. So they don't have any option to retreat. So now we go to round number three. There are no defending A units, so the attacking A unit, the Burgundian mercenaries, roll three dice and score hits on one, twos, and threes. They score two hits, and uh, all three defending units are equally strong. They have one strength point. So the first hit will be taken by Buckingham, and that eliminates him. And the second hit will be absorbed by Rivers, and he will also be eliminated. There are no more A units. Now we go to the defending B units, and the only one is Prince Edward. He has a strength of one, but because he's defending in a space with a crown, his strength is two. So he rolls two dice, and he needs ones to hit. So he scores one hit, and that has to be absorbed either by the Burgundian mercenaries or Hastings. And it will be Hastings. And now the B attacking units fire. We start with Warwick. He rolls two dice and needs one, twos, or threes to hit. He rolls a two and a four, one hit, and Prince Edward's block is eliminated. And all Lancastrian units have been eliminated. And that ends the battle in round three. The attacking units are victorious. And now the attacking units have the option of regrouping. That is, moving to an area which is either unoccupied or occupied by friendly units solely. So they will move the Burgundian mercenaries, which is this block, to Leicester. And that concludes that combat situation. This is Richard III, published by Columbia Games and designed by Tom Dalgleish and Jerry Taylor, a game that I played at the third Bellotacon and enjoyed very much. I hope this video has given you a good idea of the flow of the game and what the game has to offer. This is Stuka Joe, signing off for now. Thanks for watching.